All right, this video is going to be for um, specifically for entourage, right? And so the requirements of this class says that you need entourage people and trees and or trees um, in your sections and elevations. So um, as a rule of thumb, typically a section is going to be a little bit more of a technical drawing and an elevation is going to be a little bit more of a uh, illustrative type of drawing. So when it comes to people or trees, I, I, I kind of, I caution myself saying this, but I kind of lean toward a rule of thumb of saying that, you know, you put people in sections and you put trees in elevations, but that doesn't mean that they're mutually exclusive. Um, so basically when you're creating an elevation, uh, let me make this just kind of ready for it here. Um, when you're making a, sorry, a section, uh, you, like anything else, you're going to have your typical, um, you're going to have your typical uh, earth hatch and stuff like that. Uh, which, which one was I doing here? Model, did my own, my own two. There we go. All right, it's that one. Um, so you're going to do your typical earth hatch, and I'm just going to start off, I think, by dropping in another cut line as my grade. And so um, this is an oversimplification. You'll have the hatch on the bottom. I might put it in there at some point. But um, AutoCAD has a, a design block library, and I'm just going to check it to see if there are people in it. And, in fact, I don't recall. It's been a long time since I've actually used it. And I always lose where it is. Yeah, there it is. All right, so it's called the Design Center. And Design Center is basically a giant block library. And in this library, you have a lot of pre-made blocks, if you recall that terminology, um, of elements and entourage that you can use. Guys, will you focus, please? Um, the, the weird and, you know, the, the part about this that's not intuitive is that it's in this really weird folder. Um, so I'm just going to kind of, kind of lead you to it and you should probably save this video or you can just Google it, but under E N U S that's where design center is. I don't know why they make you open all these things up when you press the design center button, because I think that this probably should be the first place you go. Um, but you'll notice that there are a bunch of things here. Um, if you look under house designer and then go into blocks, you see that you have a lot of the typical things that go into a house. So feel free to use these if you want to dress up your drawings a little bit, um, particularly for your own sake for your portfolios. I'm not requiring it as a part of the class, but I would suggest that if you're going to include some of this stuff in your portfolio, use this, um, this type of block in order to, you know, dress it up and make it look like a house, which is what it is. How do you get there? I will go back to it. So um, it's under the insert tab and this little button right here called design center. And you have to go into this weird ENUS folder and then design center. So um, kind of backing out here, back up to the design center, there's, uh, I forget whether or not they have people, they probably don't. So I'm going to simplify people. but the landscaping blocks are pretty good for our use too. Um, landscaping blocks, they're just line work. They're really nothing special. But to use one of these, it's as simple as um, you can double click it and hit OK and it drops it into the workspace. My uh, screen is really big right now. but um, And it drops it into the workspace. And so you'll get a little grip here. And that little grip you can kind of just slide along and drop into your section. Uh, right now I'm doing a section, so I'm not going to leave this one here. But you'll see that these things are, um, you can click and drag to drop it in. Uh, those are not elevations. But they come in variable sizes and scales and stuff like that. And you can obviously do a scale command and size it up to a different size too. That make a really giant bush or something like that. Okay, so um, that is essentially all there is for trees. It's really simple. Um, 
at least in elevation and section. So in your elevation, which I have over here, I think I have, I think these two are the ones that I was using. I'm gonna spread them out a little. So I'll move this one. Oh, that's hatched. Funny. Move that one up. Okay, so this one as an elevation will still have a grade line. but it will get more contextualized by dropping in a couple trees, essentially. So I typically just kind of drop a few basic ones. What line weights are the trees going to be? Um, trees are typically going to be very thin lines. So, so your detail lines pretty much. Yeah, they'll be on, under your detail line okay. layer. Get Do it you crisp. also want to add in the earth, like the, uh, underneath the slab? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the earth would show in elevation, except the difference in elevation is that you're not going to see the slab necessarily. <coughs> yeah, well, you get the idea. Like that. So you just get rid of the slab when you're doing that? Yep. Okay. Um, and, you know, throughout the class, I'm going to flesh this out with you so that you'll see a finished product and what it should look like, but I want to give you just the tools for how you actually drop the components in right now. Um, and I'll get the finished product in the video as well. Okay, so that is, you know, your basic approach to elevations when it comes to trees. Um, now, trees also exist in plan. Um, I don't have a site plan here, but, um, you know, you guys have, let me see if I can just open up a site plan real quick. Um, All right, so on your site plan, um, your ours is gonna have some contours on it, right? So the contours are gonna be a sort of separate line that's gonna exist throughout the, the drawing. But in the landscaped areas, you have the opportunity to drop in these blocks as well. So let me put this on a layer that's gonna make more sense. But, uh, oh, layers. one call it trees trees is going to be very thin so I think I said 0.15 that goes on trees I like to make trees some kind of green, usually. 83 works. All right, so um, these can also be scaled. So I'll scale this one down to half its size. And so, you know, when I'm doing kind of like a tree plan like this, what I often do is, you know, copy, copy a few of them off to the side and drop in a few versions of it, um, which would basically look something like uh, oh, they only give me one. Oh, clumps of trees. So it looks like there's only two plan-oriented ones. But you can download blocks online, too, essentially. Um, trees. And so I usually copy a couple instances of it off to the side and scale them at various sizes. So this one I'll make... Uh, three quarters of the size of that one, and this one I'll make even half of that. Something like that. And then you can just go through the process of dropping them in. So you copy, and you know I'll drop uh, one of them in the corner here, that's too big. Scale it down. Grab one of these little small ones here. And then you can put a couple more, you put one in each of these islands, maybe a couple out front there, and another one in the back. Okay, so that's the most basic dropping in of a tree block, but what I think really makes um, a drawing pretty special is to set up a shadow for the trees. So the shadows are, are kind of important. 
Um, they're, they're not necessarily um, needed, per se, but it really helps to have them. And so what I typically do for that is, um, for the more complex ones, I'll show you what I do. Um, let me just kind of set up another layer here. And I'll call it, oops, shadow. I'll make it dark blue, no, I'll make it magenta. Close Design Center for a second, go to Shadow. So for the, um, for the really simple circular ones, you just draw a circle around it like this, and you do that for each of the trees. And some blocks actually come preloaded with shadows um, if you download them online, but this is if you want to make your own. Just draw a little perimeter. And then this one, uh, well, we'll just copy that with it. So um, wh whatever direction your sun's coming in, um, if you want to do the math, you can figure out exactly the length of the shadow that you need for the tree. But typically, just a couple feet in a particular direction is going to give you a pretty well accentuated shadow for a tree. So something like that. And I usually just draw a line off to the side like that and take um, all of the circle components and move it along that line. Actually, that's probably too extreme. So I'll make this half the size. Move it like that. Um, this one I am copying. And that gets put on shadow. And so here's the really important part. Um, so this is, uh, I'll call this one actually shadow line. And then that other one that I made, I'll make it gray, light gray. And call this one um, actual shadow. So, And the reason is I'm basically just going to do a hatch in the areas that I'm creating the shadow with. So I can just turn on the shadow layer, type in hatch, go to solid, and then you select, uh, sorry, not, not select, pick points. And then you just pick the points around each of these. Oh, that didn't like that. I'll have to play with that one later. Uh, I'll, I'll figure that one out later. It doesn't like that for some reason. Maybe it'll fix it for me later on. Oh, I'm getting some graphic errors. You might have to explode these. Maybe that one wasn't closed? Yeah, I'm not sure. No, it is closed. Might have to trim it or explode it or something. Well, you know, I'll, I'll show you some troubleshooting techniques and stuff uh, on an as-needed basis. But basically, this drawing should be formatted. Um, should be formatted to properly work if I just kind of play around with the settings of those layers. So I'll turn um, the shadow line layer to a no-plot layer. And the shadow layer is 254 as a gray. So if I go back into my plot, modify... Oh, I lost my custom one, huh? Oh, I think I, I made this one. So 254, if I go down to that number, I can make sure that it doesn't show up black. And I select a color, and I make sure that that shows up gray. Save and close. OK. Close. Um, oh, you know what? I should probably make that transparent. Yeah, this one's probably best set to transparent to make sure that the black lines underneath will show up. So I'll go back and modify that. Um, 254, or yeah, 254, I'll go back to making it black. Save and close. Plot transparencies I'm going to turn on. Close, and then I'll um, do a lay ISO on that, lay ISO. Select them all, make sure the transparency is set to something like 90. Lay on. 
then go to layout, then it should work. Preview. And it did not. Let's find out why. So 54. Oh, it's set to also no, no plot. Make this very thin as well. Still not working. Set the plot, 0 0.15, 254. Could just be really light. Let me turn the transparency off here. Just turn it to 50. Hmm. Custom gray hatch. 254 black on automatic. All right, so it doesn't even show up in monochrome, so something's wrong here. Well, I'll figure this out and I'll get it in the video here to show you. All right, so um, I finally figured it out. I don't know what was wrong. Well, I didn't figure it out is the problem. Um, I don't know what was wrong, but for some reason the layer, I couldn't find the setting that was making it non-plottable. Um, but I just created a new layer that I knew was working um, off of the model. So basically if you select a layer and you hit new layer, it borrows the properties of that layer. So I don't know if my layer just got corrupted or something because I did it off of a non-plottable layer um, to create a new one and then tried to turn it on. But anyway, this is what it looks like when you create shadow, I'll, although my shadows are a little bit messed up. But um, you can tell, I, I think, you can tell that it creates a really good um, measure of de uh, depth in the drawing. Now. The, the risk that you run is that it makes your building look flat. So if this is the case, then you might want to just, you know, if, if for some reason your building looks flat, or you could actually do the same thing and just pull your shadow for the building off too, with the perimeter of the building itself. Um, just make it a little taller or something like that, but it's not going to be accurate. Um, it will give you a sense of depth to say like, well, this is a building versus, uh, you know, trees or something like that. but. Essentially, that's, that's all you'd have to do to make a pretty convincing site plan. And you could also take groups of trees and kind of pull the shadows longer for some or shorter for others, and make it look like some trees are taller than others. That's another, um, but this is a simplified version. Okay, um, what questions do you have about this? It's pretty simple, right? It's just dropping little blocks in and doing some clever, you know, shadows if you want. So. Um, I'll show you people in a little bit. That's pretty pretty simple.